So welcome back to Dazzatron's Diorama Llama and this is part two of the video on how to make a low relief of the Autobot arc. So as you can see here I've prepped the relief um, styrofoam sculpture if you like and so I've used black on the rock formation and I've used white on the arc itself and also in the background and the reason why I've done that is I find black works really well um, for kind of rock formations because it really kind of brings out some of the the kind of deep the recessed areas and you get that kind of strong contrast between the parts that are kind of raised and the parts that are indented when it comes to the arc itself, because the arc is more of a orange colour, if we use black underneath, that black is too stark really for the orange to paint over. So I find that the orange is much brighter when you paint it on top of a white surface. So what I've done here is I've taken some yellow ochre and I'm using a dry brush method. So that means I'm just applying the paint to a larger brush, rubbing it off onto a piece of kind of kitchen towel. And then I'm just using a backwards and forwards motion all over the raised surface. So you can see now he's got this kind of, I suppose, kind of gold kind of layer over the top. If you a bit unsure about the dry brush method, then do check out some of my earlier videos. Um, particularly obviously the painting videos and you'll see me use that a little bit more it's quite a common technique for really bringing out the texture of rock surfaces so what you can see on the screen now is a mixture of a little bit of red some more of the ochre and a bit of white so it's, it's, it's a little bit of a peach kind of color really and so i'm going to use that to add a further layer to the rock formation because it's quite light in the reference photo and of course you'll see the reference photo on screen on parts of this video so you can see what I'm talking about so I really wanted to lighten up some of these rock formations so I'm adding a much lighter tone here and this time I'm keeping the brush actually quite wet so it's really kind of covering those raised areas a lot more than it would if I was using the dry brush method. And of course what I would say is if you've tuned into this video and you haven't seen the, the video before this one on how to actually make the arc and to cut that out and sculpt it out of a piece of styrofoam then of course do go back and check that video first and then feel free to to hop back in and see how to paint that low relief so the same method again i'm wiping off some of the excess but i'm not really drying the brush too much and as you can see here i've applied a lot more of this lighter tone to the the kind of the pathway leading up to the arc and of course on the rest of the rock formation now you will add a lot more layers when it comes to the paintwork and that's the thing to remember when you're painting anything like this really where it's a raised surface um, you do want to kind of build up in layers sometimes it's quite nice to add washes over the top and you'll see me do that a little bit later so you can see here I've already added another coat now to the arc itself so there's no detail on the arc I've just given it a base coat and for that I've just used yellow a bit of red and a bit of the yellow ochre just to make uh, an orange colour that I'm, I'm happy with and again it's your choice I'm using the reference material as a bit of a guide and so I've just added that all over and then inside the the kind of funnels I've just added 
some little bit of black in places or a little bit of the the dark brown color just to start to begin to darken up places and that's what I'm doing now so looking at the reference material there's kind of some shadows here near the bottom of the arc so I'm just using that darker brown which I think is a burnt umber if I remember right but you can use any brown really as long as it's reasonably dark it will work so I'm just starting to add shadows. You can see me look at the reference material on my phone there. And what this does, it really exaggerates the 3D quality because this is a relief and not a sculpture that's fully three dimensional. By adding these paint effects, it really makes things kind of pop and creates that sense of perspective really. So now I'm using a bit of the yellow ochre with a bit of white and I'm just picking out some of the raised areas so the bits that are kind of sticking out at the top some of the flat areas that I haven't really cut away just adding those lighter colors and then I'm using some burnt sienna here which is kind of a reddish brown just inside the funnels and by using that already you can see it gives the impression that these are a lot deeper than what they actually are so obviously I haven't actually cut away that much really when you come to think about it but by adding these darker paint effects it gives the impression again that it's going much deeper than what it actually is so even with just that kind of paint effect on there that makes a massive difference when it comes to the the entrance to the arc it's got like a glow to it so I've started with a bit of yellow, so it's quite bright. And then just added a touch of orange on top of that. So just using a little bit of red with the yellow. Because I want there to be a bit of a contrast between the between the entrance to the arc and the arc itself. So here just to darken up some of those um, heavier shadows, I'm using a little bit of black. Mixing it with a bit of the the burnt sienna there. So it's not, I don't want it to be jet black. I want it to look more like a shadow. And because I'm working wet on wet, which means I'm adding wet paint on top of wet paint, you're starting to get a nice blend. And that's really important, is that you work reasonably quickly. Acrylic does dry quite quick. So you work with those paints quite quickly. Um, if it does dry, just add another layer of the kind of the undercoat. So in this case, I'm adding some more of the orange and the brown and then working back to the black again to kind of blend that back in. So what I'm doing here, I'm trying to create the impression that there's a bottom to these kind of funnels. So I've mixed a lighter orange, or I suppose a similar orange to the main body of the arc. I've waited till the paint is dry inside those funnels, and now I'm just kind of creating those kind of curve shapes. So I'm kind of painting in the bottom, rather than sculpting in the bottom of the funnels. And again, it just gives the impression that there, you know, there is an end, if you like. So you can see already that's quite effective just moving that around just so you can see how that works from different angles and because the background is going to be a blue quite a bright blue again I've used white in the background so that blue shows up really nicely So here, if you look at the reference material, there's, if you like, a mountain in the background. So I'm just painting that in again with a bit of the yellow ochre and white. And now I'm painting in the, the sky, just using a bit of the blue again with mixed with the white. 
And if you use some of the darker blue on the top and just kind of blend that in, it just looks a bit more natural then rather than using a very flat colour. And it's up to you really how, how dark or how light you go with this. You might find as well with the colours that you use, so wherever you buy your acrylics, there will be slight differences to the colour choices. But it should look reasonably similar to, to what we've got here. So again, this is just some of the yellow ochre mixed with white. And I'm applying it much heavier this time, so I'm not using a dry brush effect, I'm just painting it on. Because I really want that to, to stick out. I want there to be a big contrast between the, the path and the rock formations on either side. And if you look at the reference material, you can see kind of little bits of red and pink and oranges within the pathway. So I'm just adding little touches of that in places. And it just adds a bit of interest. And it gives more of a painterly feel to it. And again, looking back at the reference material, it has a painterly feel. And that's what I'm trying to capture. So you can just see some variations there in the pathway. So I've got my initial kind of tones in there, if you like, or colours in there. So we just want to, again, pick out some of the details now. So obviously there's a big jump here. And the reason why I haven't shown you me applying all of this detail is just for the length of the video. You would have been here hours watching me picking out some of those fine details. But what you can see on my palette there is got a mixture of colours. I've got this kind of dark brown, which is the burnt umber. I've got black. I've got purple. I've got this yellow ochre, a little bit of red, white and the burnt sienna, which is the reddish brown. And so look at the reference material, you can see this kind of reflected light at the bottom of the arc. And so I've used a purple here and it seems a bit of quite a strong contrast, but it works really well. And I've added some highlights inside the funnels as well, just to give them that more kind of cylindrical kind of feel to it. Uh, and just to make it look like they're, they're kind of reflecting that light. Again, look at the reference material. When you're adding this, I'm not making this up out of my head. I'm using that. And you can also see all the fine details in the side of the ship. That makes it look like this is a, you know, this has been built uh, by these robots. Um, and I've just used um, a little bit of the orange mixed with a little bit of black to add the darker areas. And I've got the, the ochre here and the white to add some detail into the rock formations. I've also used that yellow ochre and white for the lightest areas on top of the arc there. So if you look at the very top of the ship, on top of the funnels and on the edges, I've used that just to kind of pick out some of those details. And by starting to get that contrast between the very light areas and the, the dark areas, again, it gives that impression of perspective and it really makes the relief pop. So I'm just adding a little bit of yellow or a lemon colour. And again, these acrylics, you don't have to pay expensive for them. A cheap set will do from any hobby store. Even some of the um, the kind of the pound shops now stock acrylics on, on occasion. So it's just worth keeping an eye out. And it's good to have as well a mixture of brushes, different sizes. Because you will need some finer brushes for those really fine details. So those details in the side of the arc there. I'm using a very, very fine brush. And of course here where I'm starting to add some more detail to the rock formations. I'm using a slightly thicker brush there. So I've used a little bit of red mixed with the yellow ochre. It's this kind of golden brown colour. And then a bit of the reddish brown colour. And it's almost making a kind of a, a pinkish tone actually. And so 
where the the slanted areas of my rock formation are I'm adding in this kind of this pinkish brown colour and then where the raised parts are so the very ends um, I'm now adding the yellow ochre mixed with a bit of white and then finally a, a touch more white on the very ends of the rocks so you're using actually the the texture of the rock itself to dictate where you add the darker areas and the lighter areas so the bits that are sticking up go a lighter and the bits that are a bit more recessed you're going with a darker tone and you do that the same method on all of the rock formations just it's really important just to make sure that your light source wherever you've decided your light will be coming from is the same angle on all of the rocks now again i've used the reference material to get an idea of where the light is coming from and it's coming from the right hand side and so i'm using again a little bit of purple as well in this one in the parts that are indented so the parts that are kind of slanted and then i'm using the yellow ochre on the parts that are raised and when i'm applying this the I'm using quite a lot of water within this paint so it's more of a wash really and by doing that again it blends nicely with the colours that are underneath so particularly if those colours are still wet you're getting these nice blends between the purple and the pinks and these kind of golden colours and then again just a little bit of white um, mixed with the yellow ochre so it's a slightly off white rather than a pure white um, just in the raised surfaces just to really kind of bring out that light and you can build this up or add as many layers as you want with this if you find it's not working you want to go a bit darker in places then go a bit darker if you need to let it dry for a little bit and then go back in with some of the lighter paints then then do so Make it work for you. So I'm going back over with some of this kind of pinkish tone. And again, it just adds a bit more interest. It's better than just using one colour, um, like a uniform colour all over the rock formation, um, which is not as interesting. So by kind of going between the different colours in your paint palette, the purples and the pinks and the browns, it just makes it look a lot more interesting and it kind of looks a bit more like an animation as well then so i'm adding some highlights just inside the funnels here and again it's just it's the original color with a little bit of white So just picking those areas out and it's, it's really worth again enlarging the reference material looking at those fine details and adding as much detail as you possibly can because it really does make a difference and I appreciate that all of you will be painters who are tuning into these videos but again I'd encourage you to have a go the great thing about acrylic paint if it goes wrong let it dry and you can paint it over it again you can paint it back to white um, you could spray it back to white and then paint over it again. So you really can't go wrong with this. So as you can see here, you know, the final effect looks pretty cool. And you're really playing with the, the shape that's already there. So where I'm adding shadows, I've already created those, those indents and those slants. So I know where to paint those shadows. And just moving this around just so you can see it from different angles and it really does create an illusion of a more kind of three-dimensional sculpture than what a regular painting would do because you could just paint this as a background or even print it off but by creating the relief formation first and then painting it it just creates this really nice illusion and as you can see here on the on the screen this is this is my finished background inside the Billy bookcase and I just think that looks really cool. It really grabs your attention um, when you see it. 
So thanks for tuning in. Do like and subscribe. Please share. Please pass on uh, this channel to other people and tune in again. Thank <laughs> you.